my name is Shegun Shomomi, or do I just tell you my new name that I've just been given by the beautiful people of Ibibio in Aqua Ibom State is Ininfong Abasi. I love that name so much. This is the fourth visit I've gone, come to Aqua Ibom. When I came the first time, I said to myself, this will are very clean. And then I came the second time and I said, this is really, really, really very clean and very organized. Then I came the third time and I concluded that the Akwaibomites are the most sophisticated people in Nigeria. I say this because I wonder how they act so clean. I go to the places that are not very rich, where you have like maybe the people that are lower level class. It's still clean. I look at them on the street. It's still very clean. I go to their restaurant. They have like five, 10, 20 people seated there. They're not brawling. They're not shouting. No, man. These guys are clearly the most sophisticated of all of us in Nigeria. So I feel very at home around them. I love their food. I love their sense of hospitality. No, man, I, I tell you, I tell you, look, I wish everybody would just come to Uyo and then when they see the way the roads are, how all of the roads connect to everywhere, they will understand that there's a little paradise being created somewhere in the south, south of Nigeria. Okay. And all the governors, and even I myself, a would-be governor, I have come here to truly come and inspire myself that there's something going on here. We're just not talking about it well enough. I think that Akwa Ibom must have a deliberate policy to invite people to come and do things. For instance, on the golf course, I feel that if we could just have like a very big international tourney, put a very reasonable price money on it, and allow it to go onto the golf circuit, you'll have enough face time, Aquaibon will be on the map. I feel that you've built it, it's now time to invite the world to come for it. I also think that you could spend a lot of money in doing the reimaging of the state and then advertising it. And I think that you have what I'm hoping will be the flagship thing that Nigeria has to offer the world in terms of your airline. It's run professionally, it's run very well, and I'm truly, truly hoping that Aqua Ibon keeps the dream. And what you transit from three, one leader to the next, one leader to the next. And I'll tell you, politics and all of its inconveniences, Aqua Ibon's developmental trajectory makes a whole lot of sense to me. I'm very proud of what they're doing here. You know, I came back from England and the whole of Europe because I lived in Germany as well. And I started to live in Nogun since 1999. I lived in Abeokuta. <clears throat> My main reason was I wanted to really stay with them, understand them, study them, get a hang as to what type of people they are. I'm from Abeokuta, by the way. And I have tried very hard to inspire past leaders to stay focused on the big things and reduce some of the distractions. We're lucky relative to our own, you know, small ideas that we're running. And I thought that we did, we're not improving fast enough. We're not focusing, you know, laser sharp enough. And that the time now has caught up with us. We need to increase our investment in education, not just running the super program. I feel that Ogun State, being the state of Afimi and Wolowo, can afford to be the first state in Nigeria that guarantees free qualitative early education, which is the kindergarten and nursery school. Because I believe that if we're able to do that, we can then inspire everybody, the haves and the have not, to level up the space when they get to from one, primary one, when they connect to the federal government scheme. And I believe that it will help us to reduce the number of people who are not so interested in education and therefore increases our out of school children. I believe also that we need to be deliberate in terms of the policy we're running in education to ensure that we can create the training and enabling environment to prepare our citizens for the kind of future that the world is. There's a lot of IT. I've seen what they're doing, but I think we're just playing lip service to IT. A lot more investment needs to go there, and we need to be more deliberate. I also believe that when it comes to the health of our people, I've agonized for years asking where does the health budget tangentially touch the people. What, are, what do I mean by that? How do the people get a reasonable benefit, a short benefit from their health? What I have observed is that they like to build, 
the infrastructure and the life to buy expensive equipments when they can. But that only enriches them. They have never bothered to ask, why should a state like ours not have some policy in place that at least guarantees that those that are verified citizens of the state can get a verified benefit? It doesn't matter where they are. And I think those are some of the radical ideas. I believe that when it comes to security, I feel they are very lazy in thinking. And I feel that the implementation is totally haphazard. I believe that for you to secure a people, it doesn't matter what the law of the Federal Republic is relative to whether you can have a police or not. I believe that the law does not prevent you from having a verifiable identification to a tangible, easy to see address. What am I saying? I'm saying that Ogun indigenous under me will be captured by biometric to a verifiable address. What that does is that it immediately makes it easy for you to find them, and then you can plan. And you can also go back to a crime scene and take biometric to be able to find them. That alone will reduce the tendency for people to do petty crime. I also believe that we have gotten to a point now where we must find a role for the traditional institution and the leaders there, the tier A, tier B, and tier C leaders of the traditional institution, where we begin to charge them and give them some responsibility to give us an idea that they know what's going on in their domain and create a reporting line for them so that they can even be held responsible for unmitigated misdemeanors that comes to take place in their state. I think that as a people now, we cannot insist that the only way to grow an economy is private public sector partnership. I like it, but what I hear them do and what I see them do is that they reduce all of the assets of the state to be available only to the rich without really paying enough attention to figure out how to make other people rich. My approach is that under me, we're going to have the most radicalized wealth transfer scheme that puts capital and money in the hands of those that are already trading. What am I saying? I'm saying that those who are in business already will be given money to expand their scope and be encouraged to participate in government. My idea of public-private sector partnership is the expansion of asset to credit to small-scale traders. I suppose that I prefer the zero, uh, you know, the, the straight-line budgeting system where we know what we get. What we get, we run something like it's similar to the single treasury account. We prioritize the things that are important and we ensure that we cut out all the waste. For instance, I can't even imagine how you build a road. Instead of just cutting a tape and getting people to use it, you have to go commission it. I don't accept that. I think that once you build the road, save, the, save yourself all the other resources used for commissioning. I think that in terms of the money that they spend now and the resources they get, I think that if you tighten up all of the loose ends where people lose money, I think that we're able to practically use it in such a manner that the governor doesn't sit in OK Muscle. He goes to each of the local government with an intention of running government from a local government per week for two to three days. Thereby, he can directly intervene, set up governor's liaison office, and before you know it, you'll be developing the state universally across board through the nooks and crannies. The opposition APC, the ruling party, they're even more divided. The last time I checked, they don't even have a party like that. They have someone in government who is the governor now, who is doing average things, and they have a lot of their party leaders completely off the scale. Some of them don't even participate in the activities anymore. The place is broken. And his approval job rating, the last time I looked at an audit, was just about 23, 25%. So he can't be beaten. It's not like it's very easy to beat him. But if we just applied ourselves to what needs to be done, I believe that we can. I can unite the people. I believe that I have the numbers. I believe that I've been around them for all of this time, talking about these issues. My views are very much known. My ideas are pretty, pretty radical. And I think that the state itself needs to give itself a chance to have a radicalized approach to governance. We have gone about it the old way for too long. It's time now to try the sincerely bold way. I want to say thank you very much for inviting me. I love the ambience of this place. I truly feel that if we can just achieve what Akwaibom has achieved, in terms of road network, connecting almost all the local government 
to the state capital by road, I think we would have done something. And I hardly hear Akwaibon calling people to come and commission roads. So I think that maybe they have come to the conclusion that you build one road and then build the next road and then build the next road. I think that's something people must learn from them. I think Akwaibon is very clean. I think I'm going to make it the role model for Ogun and in terms of cleanliness. A lot of it will require people changing their attitude. And I feel that I'll be able to make the people of this space be the role model for them. If Akwaibon can be this clean, there's no excuse why any other part of Nigeria cannot impact that cleanliness from them. It was really nice having you. Thank you.